Well, hi, Jaron Johnston. Hello. Do people pronounce the T or do they skip it? Sometimes they don't. We get Jared Johnson sometimes, and those are usually people I don't <laughs> hang out with anymore. Wasn't so. he the footloose guy? Or not the, the footlong guy? Oh, Jared. Uh, yeah, there was a guy named Jared, but it wasn't Johnson. Okay. Yeah, is there anyways. Jared Johnson? Is that a real person? I, I would imagine somewhere out there. That probably sounds like a job <laughs> for Google. <laughs> okay, Jaron Johnston in the hizzy. Yeah. <laughs> The ass cappy. And the ass cappy. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to start off with a few questions, okay? Okay, cool. So just answer what first comes to mind. Okay. Who do you admire and look up to? Um, Huge Tom Petty fan. Um, look up to is weird, you know. <laughs> I think everybody, every musician, I think your husband would probably say the same thing, wants to be Tom Petty. You know, I, I think Tom Petty is the ultimate yeah, one. Yeah, on like a cool level and on a uh, songwriting level, that's a pretty cool thing. I look up to those kind of people, Mick Jagger, all the nostalgic rock stars okay mm -hmm. great if you could have this is a very traditional question but i actually really want to know because i think it's gonna be interesting with you if you could have a party dinner party with five people mm -hmm. who would they be obviously your beautiful wife yeah yeah i'd probably invite my wife <laughs> um, excluding your gorgeous wife who's pregnant with a baby in april coming out okay yes so if i could have a dinner party with five people mm -hmm. chuck norris would definitely be there <laughs> You're a Chuck Norris fan. Well, that would be amazing. Because you're like a secret ninja, huh? Yeah, well, I was going <laughs> to go through those first. So, ch Actually, it would just be such a cool dinner if I could have Chuck Norris, John Claude and Don, Bruce Lee, Mike Tyson, and uh, let's throw in uh, Ronda Rousey. I didn't realize that you were like such a... Well, just a think of the conversations that would be had. Like, it, it'd be a lot of, uh, I could kick your ass or you could kick my ass. You know, that would you jump in on that? No, I would I would strike the conversation and be like, so which style of fighting do you think would really win this whole thing? And then it just gets, you know, the real question is, what do you eat? Well, what they do you probably, serve? I bet you they eat like chicken and chicken, raw chicken, not vegetables. raw chicken, but, but uh, bare chicken and vegetables. It's probably no drinking. I'm, I'm drinking. But don't you think those people are pretty strict? I guarantee Chuck Norris probably is drinking. Chuck right Norris now. is probably drinking. Yeah. What do you think Chuck he Norris drinks? is probably at Dan McGinnis right now with Mike Sistad. <laughs> <laughs> I think he drinks prune juice and and uh, and Jack Daniels, <laughs> the old Jack Daniels and prune. I can't believe that's the people you would pick for your dinner party. Well, you sprung it on me. I didn't. It's not <laughs> like I had. Awesome. A, I didn't know you had the secret love for like ninja fighting. I do. I, I'm a big fan of old karate movies and stuff like that. Did so. you watch Karate Kid gr growing up? Oh hell yeah! I wanted to be Daniel Larusso really bad. Can you? Ralph Macchio. Can you kick real high? Yep. <laughs> Don't get me going. It's, <laughs> it's Tuesday. I kick really high on Tuesdays, so. Okay, good to know. There's a reason my pants are split right now. They they actually are. Uh, really? <laughs> yeah. That happens to Michael all the time. I swear, like his crotch just it just falls out. Like well, there's two re there's two <laughs> reasons. Let me tell you why. <laughs> Let me tell you why. No, no, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Sorry. Is that just a thing that happens with guy jeans? I never have it's crotch. A, I think ribs. it's a country western rock and roll thing. You know, I guarantee Dwight Yoakam had the same problem back in the day. You know? Oh, his jeans are tight. Yeah. Yes. Do you like uh, tight jeans? Uh, love them. <laughs> Okay, what motivates you? What motivates you to get out of bed? Like, what's your inspiration that you think of? Um, uh, like an honest answer, I honest. would say, like, I really, I'm one of the few people that, that that gets to do what he does for a living, that he actually, one of the things he really loves. So, well, you know, writing songs has always been a really fun thing for me to do, and it just so happens that it's uh, a very, you know, well-paying job if you get it going. If you get it going, right. So yeah, so it's that's been very exciting um, to do that kind of stuff. And I love touring with my band, my, you know, three best, two best friends in the world. Um, that kind of thing. Obviously, my, my beautiful wife is, she she motivates me to get out of the bed when she's like, I'm up, so you're up. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, having a baby and everything, I would imagine that's going to be more and more of that. But that I'm, I'm motivated heavily by, by music, and it's always been a lot of fun for me, you know. So your dad was in a band mm -hmm. called Bandana. He was. Uh, is that where you got your love for music? Was it just like in your veins when you were born? Yeah, I think growing up in it, you know, whether it was mom playing at the church on the organ or uh, we were one of those families that sat in the front row on the right, right by mom as she played the organ. And she played the organ? Oh, yeah, yeah Organ's yeah. hard. It was a very vanilla organ playing situation. But, but there's like four keyboards and all sorts of pedals. She was rocking it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on Sundays and Wednesdays. Mom, hot uh, on the organ. Yeah. So that, that kind of, you know, growing up in that and then dad being in the in the business and um, going at such a young age to shows like the Opry or going out on the road with him and stuff and seeing that. And, you know, I was always enthralled with a tour bus and like just that 
rock star thing. It was really cool. So I guess to see that at an early age and to find out that I did have some sort of talent, whether it was from dad or whatever, or just being around it, that I could keep a beat and I could sing and I could play guitar really easily. Just kind of those things kind of came easier to me than um, – math you know which I mean? is crazy because playing guitars in and drums is very that's like rubbing your stomach and patting your head yeah it's very it is, hard it is, yeah. to do that it is i think it's interesting that didn't you start off as a drummer before you moved to singing i did which is crazy because you have this insane voice i know <laughs> right yeah <laughs> it's good how did you check out the record if you haven't heard it <laughs> anyway sir exactly yeah. which we will get to all that okay. how did you why did you not start singing? Why did you not originally start as a singer? Because um, dad was a drummer, and so that's just what, in fifth grade, you get to pick an instrument, you know, and I obviously lean towards drums because that's what I want. Everybody wants to be like their dad. Most people do, at least. And so I went into the drum world, and I really loved it, and I was really good at it, and I actually made a decent living at it for a while. And then I really, when I was like 13, I started playing guitar badly, Nirvana and stuff like that, trying to pick out songs. And then I started re realizing that I could write songs and stuff and you know I, I how did you realize you could start writing songs when did that I kick don't know. in I, I think i just started one day and i was like oh i can do this and it, they were really bad for years you know but then you finally figure out you can do it you know decently I, I don't know why i didn't i mean i guess that's why i didn't i didn't know to start singing at the beginning you know what i mean because i didn't have anybody in my family that did that drumming so. was your roadmap right. you saw that exactly so that's what, and then you're like oh my god mm -hmm. okay so you started bands when you were, you started playing music, obviously, from birth, pretty mm -hmm. much. When did you form your first band? Because you've been in several bands, and you've had a very long history in music. Yeah, I see what you're saying here. I'm you're just saying, saying I'm old. I'm just saying you started young. I did. We, uh, I think we had our first band. It was called the Trolls of Fortune. I was 13 years old, and um, it was a very exciting experience. The Trolls, the of, Trolls of Fortune? fortune yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was real deal. What did that music sound like? It sounded like... Really, really bad Rage Against the Machine mixed with, you know, a wannabe Nirvana type thing with a guy ra rapping on it. Yeah. Okay, so what and age? I played were guitar in that, actually. What age were you when you came up with that band? 13. Name? I think we were 13, 14 years old, something like that. Okay. Yeah. How did you land on Trolls? It just of felt right, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I have no idea, honestly. That was just something my goofy friend that was in the band with me, Phil, he came up with that name and it was funny, so we went with it. And then, okay, after Trolls of Fortune, unfortunately, disband. Mm -hmm. Was it a sad day? It was when the world lost a good one <laughs> that day. Um, yeah, after we, yeah, I don't know. That, it was kind of a joke band, but then we all started getting serious with it, and then we all kind You were like the coolest kids in junior high and high school. Pretty much. For sure. We thought we were. And then we Definitely. kind of all split up into kind of real bands type stuff. Is that one, were you the one that started the Nick Kicks? No, I, I just joined the Kicks. That you was joined the, the Kicks? Yeah, I was, that was uh, 10 years later. So after I'm actually 55 years old. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I have a, an amazing person that does my stuff. Just so. Please give me your person. I need I need to know yeah. her secrets. He is. Oh, he. He is really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every my night. My wife's on. She's over here. She's staring at me. So. She's like, well, I mean, his she's face going. does look good. You are ageless. Yeah, it's true. After Trolls of Fortune, what came next? Uh, just high school and you're playing. Like, that's when I met Kelby and uh, Neil and Ben, like all my guys that I kind of started playing with. And you're an original national native. Born and raised. Which... I kind of feel like it's almost unicornish. Yeah, it is. It, actually, I was born right over there at Baptist Hospital, and I went to high school right there on the other side of that thing. So Nashville is your town. It is. Are you? Are, do you, have you liked the way it's grown? Because it's like shot up over the past I ten years, especially. I feel like I like, you know, like certain talents and certain people that it's brought to town. Like Hobby's a great example. I wouldn't have met Michael if, if uh, you know, he hadn't have moved here. I like that aspect. I don't like how it's gotten so condo-ish and knocking down studios for all that shit that's kind of been a, uh, a bummer but it, it's a neat thing to be a part of a growth and a part of a city that is growing in a way that uh everybody's taking notice so but yeah that's my thoughts on that so originally you were in bang 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 yep and that was with kelby mm -hmm. and also neil who you're yeah. still in the band with you yeah. also had your ben friend brown. ben brown mm -hmm. y'all I remember when I moved to Nashville and I first started dating Michael, who mm. you're friends with, my yeah. husband now. Yeah. You guys owned this town. Like, yeah. everyone went to Bang, Bang, Bang. It, yeah, it was, was a good time. Nashville. To me, it was the music that everyone wanted to be a part of, hang out with, go to the shows. How did y'all get that cool vibe going, and how did you guys get together? Because Kelby was in a band called Llama. Is that right? No, that was Or Neil. Neil. Yeah, we were all, the Llama thing was like when we were in high school and, they got a record deal, and we were all kind of in that little circle, and we were just all playing with 
different people, but we all had a kind of a cool thing, which is very similar to what happened when the Bang 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 thing started. Um, we started that band, and we kind of, you know, like I said, we all went to high school together. We started that band, and then you had certain bands that also were popping around up around town, like Paramore and the Kings were already kind of Kings of Leon? Yeah, the Because you're friends with all them, right? Yeah, um, the Features, I mean, kind of, you know. <laughs> well, y'all all kind of grew up, yeah, came yeah, up yeah. together. Yeah, yeah, and then... You know, Audubon, all these cool bands, underground bands that were rocking at the same time. It was kind of like a little movement. And I guess Bang 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 was like the biggest of those bands that wasn't huge. You know what yeah. I mean? So you had Paramore and the Kings. But you guys up. were like the top right. dogs. We were big in town, but yeah. that was about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, then, and then we got a record deal and things happened. And, you know, we changed it to American Bang. And years later, I'm still doing this shit. <laughs> Years later, you're still dominating this shit. Mm. So you go from Bang Bang Bang, and then y'all change to American Bang. Mm -hmm. You sign with Warner Brothers. Yep. And Bob Rock produces yes. you guys, which mm -hmm. is mega, because he's done some major big stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, he's that was an amazing experience working with Bob. What was that like? Who has he done? Uh, he, one of my favorite. I mean, he did the Black Album, which is Metallica's kind of staple record that made him huge. But, you know, he did Permanent Vacation by Aerosmith. Um, I mean, The Cult. He did all kinds of great stuff. He's in his own band, The Paolos, too, that was pretty rad. Um, he's just like the quintessential rock producer that everybody at one point or one time wanted to be with, you know. So, And he's maintained that kind of thing for the last 30 years. So, it's uh, yeah, he was pretty incredible. Did you always know that you were going to be – in company with these greats like did you always feel that because well, you, you hope, are great you, know, you hope you hope that you know that at some point like now where we are now and the people that i run around with and the random people that text me like keith urban well, jake just owen you know, just uh, florida georgia line. yeah <laughs> well i mean like steven tyler random steven tyler yeah. is like your friend like random stuff that happens like that is is a very crazy thing like you always hope that you're going to be able to get there one day and then it kind of happens and then it happens over time and you kind of take it for granted and you find yourself not taking certain calls, and you're like, what am I doing? You know what <laughs> I mean? And that's so stupid. But it's like, you know, it's, it goes back to that childhood dream of wanting to be in this situation, you know? So this is a question that one of my main things I love about doing these interviews and talking to people like you mm -hmm. is it unearths. People might look at you, and they could say, like, Jaren's written, I mean, what, six number one hits? More or is it that. seven? <laughs> well, you need to do some more homework. <laughs> How many is it? Is it eight? Have left here. No, it should be eight, but it's actually seven. Oh. Yeah, I got screwed on me while back at Mama's. Thanks what a lot. Thanks two? a lot, Dirks. Dirks. Yeah. Ass. And a drunk on a plane kept me out. Dirks. I thought he was your buddy. He was. Was. He was. Past tense. Then. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Not anymore. So that was like that's basically number one. Yeah. So you've had like eight monster songs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is what I always like to talk about with people. Is everyone thinks it's so glamorous and so easy, and they see these people living these lifestyles, hanging out with all these people, and they're like, oh my God, that's so easy for you. Like, music must be just be such a blast and so much fun. Obviously, it is such a blast and so much fun. But it takes major perseverance. Like, obviously, you've been doing music since you were a kid, going yeah. through several record deals. How do you not get discouraged when things don't go the way you want them to, when you, when you know that you have the talent and they should? It's, I mean, it's tough. You have to know how to live broke <laughs> and stick with the dream of it will happen one day you say that to yourself forever you know and then finally you get yourself to a point where you're just like one thing happens and then it's very exciting. what was the first thing your first uh, thing that you first, remember the first thing that happened that was crazy was when i started getting just little cuts you know what i mean and then i had my first number one with keith and you're gonna fly and i remember at that moment was you know we were like we were kind of, oh, well, this is happening. And I was like, I'm that's a big song, like, too. I, I was thinking just uh, as a kid, you don't know. It's like, I'm going to be rich, you know, <laughs> know, like that kind of thing, which is not the case. But it's very but it's great. It's no, much it's, more rich than you were. But it's very <laughs> neat. You know, and, and I mean, even before that, like the first thing that happens, you get your first pub deal where somebody tell, tells you that they're going to pay you to write songs for a living, which is crazy. And that's when you stop waiting tables and you're like, I'm doing this for real. I'm one of those guys that actually get to do this. But that's did you know I heard there's only like 360 people who have publishing deals? Oh, I don't know. One per. Or maybe that's even too many. Maybe it was like 160 people actually have publishing deals in, oh. like, as a job. I have no idea. I, so it's a very small percentage of people who get to do this for a living. Yeah, it is. It's, but, you know, that's one of those things that sets you up to where you, that's just the beginning and you're like, oh, I've made it. I've got a job, but you got to keep the job. So it's like, I know. That's what it's kind of, it gets kind of intense and it's very competitive, especially these days, you know. Do you ever have a hard time celebrating a big hit because you know as soon as that celebration's over, it's you gotta start right back over, or do you just not think about that? No, I mean we 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 usually go out pretty good whenever 
there's a number one party or whatever. You know, I mean, there was a time when Neil and I would meet at Rumbo when it was still open over there. Every time we got a hold or a cut or anything, you know, we'd sit there like, we're getting hammered tonight. <laughs> we got a hole. We got a, you know, Chris Cagle hold or a, you know, whatever it is. You uh-huh. know, like, it could have been anybody and w- you, you get so excited. But, yeah, we still get really excited about all the little things like that. I do think it's important to celebrate all the victories. Yeah. I can remember celebrating my Stealing Angels hold. Did you really? No, I, d- I never oh, had a stealing angels hold. I never, such an I never <laughs> had a stealing angels hold. You guys wouldn't cut any of my stuff. I I'm telling you, I'm pr- I when I was a song plugger, I would be so excited when you were right with our writers. The first hold I at ever got Chari- were you at Cherry or No, I was at um Young Guns Publishing. And the first hold that I ever got was picking up. Oh, yeah. Pretty little hot mess, oh, rocking that, that sun. Oh, yeah. And I pitched it to every person in the world, and like four people put it on hold. And I remember thinking, like, oh my god, this song's gonna get cut because every song you write to me should be a hit. Oh, th- that song still hasn't gotten cut, by the way. Which is so <laughs> good. Yeah, that sucks. I know, and that's the thing that like blows my mind. And I'm sure as a hit songwriter and someone who writes all the time, is it frustrating when these songs that you write are so good just get overlooked sometimes? I know a lot of them don't, obviously. It, it is, though. I, I just had a meeting earlier today about a couple of songs that we were wondering why nobody's taking them yet, and a couple of people have held them, you know, and, and then they let them go, and you're just like, I mean, that's the way it was for years, you know, so it's like, I guess it just, they have to make their, rhyme, uh, their rounds, and I think a lot of it's about timing, whether or not an artist is feeling that moment or that kind of thing for that this record, or if they're cutting it all. So it's, you know, it's a lot about timing. So you're also really good, in my opinion, and I feel like you're really great at this, and I feel like my husband's really good at it, too, at kind of, like, not reinventing yourself, but learning how to, like, dance with the times, because right. obviously rock radio sort of shut down, and mm-hmm. you are rooted in rock, my husband Michael and Thousand Horses mm-hmm. is rooted in rock, but there is no rock radio anymore. Right. Do you feel like country has sort of morphed into that genre for where rock meets country? I like think it's, you know, it's obviously with – the w- you know the way that some of the artists that have started making records like like they do Eric Church is a great example I think the the genre I don't know that the genre is actually open to this but it's just kind of naturally happened with Stapleton and all these guys that are coming in and doing ne- not necessarily rock they're just doing their version of country exactly and so it's you know I grew up in Nashville I was around country music my whole life you know um, I think my version whether you want to call it rock and roll or country western or whatever southern rock i think it's just my version of what i grew up in you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so i I think the country genre is i'm really happy the way that it's embraced a couple of us and given us a home as far as the genre goes uh, because yeah rock and roll radio is tough these days and i did it for years um but you know that's what's great about country music is it's it embraces the sam hunts who are extremely far pop you know or the casey musgraves who are very texas kind of you know Mm -hmm. whatever that is and then there's also room for us. Now, whether or not country radio embraces it all the way and, you know, takes it to the top, I, I don't know that I don't know that that's going to happen yet. But I think it, it's heading that way because w- the ones that are us that are doing our own thing are building a fan base that uh, there's going to be demand for those people on the radio. So it's, it's, it's exciting times in the country genre, I think. And also, I feel like country music is blowing up in Europe. And you guys oh yeah. have gone overseas, and I feel like y'all just knock it out of the park. What is it like over there? Do you feel like... Tom Petty? No. Because well, it's, it's y'all, so, y'all shows are crazy. Well, it's neat over there because, you know, the, the Heartbreakers went over there first and they were big in Japan before they were anything over here. And I think that was our main mindset of going over there first. And, and we were one of the first country bands, us and Eric, to go over there three or four years ago. And, I mean, now it's, you know, we're bigger over there than we are here in most places. And it's, you know, it's surreal. It's crazy. They, they, they You have these people that are singing along and this to this – genre that's talking about something they know absolutely nothing about but they want to be a part of it so it's it's really neat to be kind of leading that pack because now everybody's going over there you know so it's it's cool <coughs> so not to put you on the spot or make you mm. but kind of to put me on the spot well i mean we just have to go through will you just run through your hits for me the ones that you've written for other people what you've written and who they're for i wrote you're gonna fly i've keep there mm-hmm. right, let's see if i can remember how to do them and okay. southern girl mcgraw Sunshine and Whiskey, Frankie Ballard, Donut, Billy Currington, Beach and Jake Owen, American Country Love Home Song, Jake Owen. Meanwhile, Back at Mama's, Tim McGraw. That's American Gold. Or, no, Amer- uh, not a, that's maybe when Michael was trying to yeah, cut it. Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like, we, yeah. it's not American. I was like, how did they cut it? Uh, <laughs> Raise Him Up yeah. by Keith Urban and. Days of Gold, that's what I was saying. Days of Gold, Days of Gold, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, there's, I mean, there's you know, there's a bunch of them. It's it's been a very cool couple of years. You know? And is it crazy or is it normal that Keith Urban comes over to your house to write with you? It's that's pretty weird. He's <laughs> he showed up at my house the other day to play on our our new Cadillac record, and he was in this like you know I think I Evan and I are doing pretty good. You know, I got my <laughs> truck out there, my old truck, and he pulls up in like a five hundred thousand dollar Bugatti. <laughs> What <laughs> Batmobile, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh hey, and I'm like shutting my garage door really quickly so he doesn't <laughs> so he doesn't see my old truck. But no, it's really cool, and it's it's like I said, it's one of those moments you you hope at some point you're gonna get to that point in your career, and it's it's kind of happened, you know. Has Keith Urban or anyone in particular been someone that you've like talked to or like leaned on to for? Ad, not advice about how to navigate this industry, but I see. I think of someone like Keith. Like it was never a perfectly smooth right. road for him either. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about. It. I think a lot. I, Dirks has been a really, you know, he's helped us out a lot. Eric has helped us out a lot. Um, so you're Dirks, Eric, Keith, like all mm. these people. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's crazy. The FGL guys, have, honestly, is we've been friends for so long, and we kind of both started in the bars together. They're, you know, they're in private jets and <laughs> things now, but they. They were there in those moments when we were both starting out, so they're fun to bounce ideas off to. You know, they they don't really get our world right now because, like I said, they're in private jets. But, <laughs> but they're like, man, just you know, get a man, just get a jet, dog. <laughs> just get one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just do but it. But no, everybody's been really cool. I, I think uh, there's a lot of people in town that are rooting for a band like us. Everyone. You know? Yeah. Well, and it's not even rooting. Like to me, you guys are are the band in town. Oh, like when you think of like the coolest guys in Nashville, it's always been. Bang, 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 American Bang Cat. Whatever you guys are doing right. is the coolest sound. You hear Always. that? You hear that, Hobby? <laughs> I mean, Michael would probably agree with me. Hmm. He would. He would probably have to say, oh, yeah. I get, I get nice text messages from him every now and then. Uh, Michael has a, he has a man crush on you. I mean, oh, y'all, y'all bromance. Lo- it's, it's friendship, but he also has, like, mad respect for you. I love Michael. I love Michael. Oh, yeah, heck yeah. He'd probably be like, Caroline, why are you making me look like a sissy to Jaren on your podcast right Yeah. Now? <laughs> why are you making Jaren like a sissy? <laughs> <laughs> so... Do you enjoy, is it a tie or is it even like, can you even compare? Do you enjoy being a songwriter or an artist or is it like two different children? Because you're also a producer and a publisher. Like, do you have a preference over what you love to do the most? Let's go with songwriter and artist. Yeah, I like the, the songwriter and artist kind of gives me Jacqueline Hyde. It gives me the chance to flex these muscles over here and the check to the, the chance to flex these like creative muscles over here where I can write a song about something that I don't necessarily want to sing every night. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, or live live someone else's life story over Like it doesn't here. totally match you, yeah. you. You know what I mean? And still see the success of that song. So yeah, it is kind of like two children where, you know, I still want these to do good and I want these to do good and it's it's fun. For, I mean, I, I, you know, if I wasn't with Neil and Kelby, it wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing that. You know what I mean? I wouldn't just be, I'm not going to go do a Jaron Johnson sings the blues record or whatever. You know what I mean? That's not, I do it because we have such a, blast with it as friends growing up together and pursuing that dream and actually kind of starting to taste it is very very cool but then over here it's an equal love because i love songwriting i love the f- getting the success of seeing a song go up the charts and having one of your favorite singers sing it and you know it's it's neat man both are amazing what is it like being in a band with kelby and neil it's what are the what are, how does it shake out like what are the personalities mesh it, i mean we've known each other so long it's you know i know when kelby's hungry <laughs> and he never gains weight oh yeah i know when neil's whatever you know <laughs> i mean we just kind of bounce off each other and it's it's just it's just a machine that that just rides you know like we're 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 great together we're a great band we on the stage we're just like we are in real life like uh we kind of move together and we play together you know there's no bullshit there's no tracks there's no none of that it's just Three dudes playing music together, and that's kind of the way we are in life too. It's just three dudes going through life together. So it's are y'all pretty much in sync? Like you don't really have to even speak to each other to know no, what the other I one don't needs. Say a word. We don't, <laughs> I mean, we don't even talk about what we're <laughs> opening with song wise. We just get out there and go, okay, let's go. You are know? you serious? Oh yeah, never. We never. We have never. Y'all don't even have a set list. Never have a set list. Anything? Are you kidding me? No. So y'all don't sit there and plan out the show. No. You guys just get out there and rock. Yes. And y'all just like have a look, and you know what's happening. Yes. Really. I mean, Can you change it on a s- on a dime and they're like everyone's just right there? Pretty much, yeah. Really? Yeah. That's kind of amazing. Yeah. Do you feel like that's amazing? Because yeah, is. I do. I, I'm, there's a reason I do it. You know what I mean? It's a lot of fun because it's just it's very natural with the three of us. And and it, what's neat about it is you don't see that very often in no. the country genre. You really don't. You Everything's know, so pretty prepared, yeah, mapped out. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I love that. I had no idea y'all don't use set lists. That would kind of mm. freak. I guess when you've done it that long, you know each other that well. Right. 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 Yeah. Do the new one. 
No. Okay, do Southern. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do Southern. Okay, so speaking of Southern, your first single that came out. The South. Yeah, yeah. The South. Mm-hmm. You like trying about the South and Southern. Yeah, and Southern, because that's you. Obviously. I only have a couple tricks, you know. Well, I mean, you, they say write what you know. Yeah. So clearly, you're from the South. Mm-hmm. Your first single on Big Machine was super star studded. Mm-hmm. There was Florida Georgia Line, Dirk Bentley, Mike Eli from e- Eli Young Band. Mm-hmm. That's kind of crazy to start off with a bang like that and have that much support from the community. You know? Yeah, and it was a j- it was a joke. Honestly, we were like, we should get some guys to come over and sing on this, and it was actually going to be a different song. And then for some reason, South ended up being the one that we were cutting that day, and Dirks came over, uh, FGL came over, and Mike was next door singing on an Alabama tribute record or something like that. So, so he, he was just there. Yeah, so he came over. And we'd been friends for a while. We'd just gotten off a tour of them down in Texas. So, um, yeah, it just worked out. I mean, and that was a neat thing about that time is, like, Dirks had just taken out, taken us out on the road. We were going to do some shows. We'd gotten off the road with FGL, and they were really blowing up at the time. And we were going to do a summer tour with them the next year. Is that like, what you just came off of this yeah, year? Yeah, that's what we just got done with. So... You know, it's just really neat to kind of have it all kind of come together accidentally and sing on a song that, you know, kind of was the icebreaker for us at, at, you know, in this genre. I love that. Yeah. So you love to post pictures of your food on Instagram. I do. I'm a, I, I have a problem. Tell me about this. Uh, I don't, I mean, I do don't know how Do you just love to share what you eat? Yeah. Because it's so good? A lot of times, I didn't take it as... It's a uh, thing now. Everyone yeah. looks for your food well, pictures. Well, I do it now <laughs> just because a lot of people, it <laughs> makes pe- so many people talk about it and they get so <laughs> mad about it. Or somebody's like, Why do they get mad about it? Oh, no, I'm hungry. I'm eating, I'm eating rice a roni and you're <laughs> out here, you know. I feel like it's a lot of Mexican food. Uh, yeah, oh, I did. I love Mexican and food. And yellow porch. Yeah, we ate there last night, actually. It was uh, delicious. That, I kind of like know where y'all hang based oh, on man. your Instagram food pics. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, I, you know, I, I think it, right now I started doing it just for fun. It's like, oh, this looks great. And now I do it just because people are always talking about it pretty much, too. And I like a good meal. You know what I mean? And if it looks really good, it's like I could put that filter on it. It's going to look really <laughs> good. <laughs> do you have a certain craving? Like, do you crave certain things? Dude, my wife is pregnant, and I crave more than Do you have, like, does. empathy cravings for her? Well, I'm always – when she got pregnant, I was so excited because I was like, this will – this will knock out the one thing we usually argue about is what we're going to eat at night. Because I'll just let her call it because I can eat anything. I don't care. I just get excited about it. <laughs> you just are ready. Yeah, I'm ready to go <laughs> right now. And she goes, <laughs> she she doesn't really, she hasn't really craved much. And so it's still, I'm like, you want to go to Asian? How about Asian? And she's sick of Asian. She doesn't, Asian hasn't been her thing while she's been pregnant. So we eat a lot of pizza, a lot of Mexican and stuff like that. But yeah, I do have, I have cravings for Mexican like probably once, twice a day. I don't eat it once or twice a day sometimes, <laughs> but but I do like it a lot. Well, it's amazing. Okay, this feels like a good time to bring Evan in. I want to I want to just bring Evan in for the end of the interview, just a little bit. Come, you have to come join us. You have to come sa- come she come say hi. Makeup on. You do too. You have makeup on here. You're not fat. What you have in your stomach is called a baby. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. a big one. Okay, so first off, what are y'all having? Can we tell? Can you talk about it? Sure, we're having a boy. Do we have a name? Not yet. Rambo. Or Chuck, or what are all those yeah. people? Chuck, no. <laughs> Chuck, no, or <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no name. We have it narrowed down, no. but we we're not decided. telling. You know what? I actually think that that's a really good idea not to tell people because then everyone gives you their opinion. They're like, "Oh, I knew someone named Chuck, and he and was he the sucked, worst." He sucked. Yeah. People have lots of opinions about names. Yes. And lots of opinions about pregnancy in general, oh. other people's pregnancy, which is strange. But um, yeah. So we have it narrowed down, but yeah, we're not. We're not What's some of the worst pregnancy advice you've gotten from someone? Um, I get a lot. I don't know. Just people butting in where they're not supposed to. Um, we're giving birth in a in a private birth center, and I think a lot of people are um, hesitant and want to know why you're not going to a hospital. But it's Love really because hospitals of their freak business. me out. That's why we're not going to a hospital. <laughs> yeah, Jaren would pass out in a hospital. Yeah, it's we like, need oh, to go look at this. The is for him. Hey, really. yeah, look at the back. <laughs> Yeah, who's the one giving labor here? Yeah. Yeah, well, we really need to, yeah, just work around his schedule and if he's stressed out or not. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I don't know. This It's just all kinds of stuff. Or people want to tell you what you should eat. Actually, I did have a lady while we were down at the beach. Uh, I ordered uh, a green juice, and she told me that I should not be having a green juice because of, like, the risk of 
there's lots of things, listeria, whatever, but um, I am very well educated and I drink green juices all the time. But anyway, it's just funny when people want to try to tell you what she to eat. She was not drink. a happy camper. It's goofy. She came to me and said, I want a smoothie, but you have to go get it from that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what she said. That was the second time. Yeah, yeah. Because I, w- I drink like green smoothies or juices every That's day. And uh, yeah, she like pissed me off. So I made Jaren go get it the second time. I almost didn't want one, but I needed one. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I recently... Hyperdrive. <laughs> pregnancy blog. <laughs> so Point two. I recently interviewed the wives of a thousand horses mm-hmm. because I think it's a very interesting perspective. What are y'all the jockeys? The jockeys because we ride horses. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like Isn't a sex funny? thing. It's like a sex thing. I think it's a sex thing. Some of the girls don't think it's funny to be a sex thing. But, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're not going to have a funny name, then what's the point? Yeah, okay. I like it. So... How you have been, y'all been like high school sweethearts, y'all been together for how many years? It'll be 16 in February. Yep. And y'all are just like not even in your mid 30s. So that's crazy, right? At there. So that's a long time. Y'all been together a long yeah, time. Yeah, she's she's a lucky girl. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been putting up with his crap for a long time. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of what I want to ask you. What is it like being married to a musician? Like, I, obviously, there's so many layers of it. Can you give us? people who listen who have no idea what it's like being married to a touring musician songwriter I mean it's different for everybody this goes back to the advice thing I never try to tell people you know I do it right and we have the secret or anything like that but um I mean you've got to have your own life you've got to be really invested in yourself and you have to stay busy and find things that you love um you have to like the band (laughs) that's true well yeah if you didn't like the music, I don't think you could be with someone. No. no, I think that that's part of it, too. Um, but, yeah, you just have to stay busy. You just have to find your own things and find your own life. And and you can't be too codependent because then you'll just be lonely and sad. And, you know, so you've just got to you've got to stay involved in things going on with you. And then you also just have to be supportive and patient and hopefully find somebody that does the same for you and we've just we've grown up together in the right way mm-hmm. so we just we got lucky like that so for all you girls out there looking for a man <laughs> in a band <laughs> don't be discouraged <laughs> it can happen to you too i would not recommend it <laughs> but, um, <laughs> i'm just kidding yeah. i do agree with you though having your own thing is crucial because if you don't i feel like you could get not you a wife or a spouse or someone could get lost in it all in a way yeah, well, there's a lot going on, and, and it a lot of times doesn't involve you, and you can be the one sitting on the sidelines, and it can be difficult and stressful. and um, you But know. fun and awesome, too. <laughs> that's if you don't have all your own stuff yes, going yes, on. Yes, I'm saying, yes. but if you're confident and yes. you feel good about yourself and you know that and you hey, are I'm and you do all this stuff going on, then, um, then yeah, then it's just fun to go hang out on the road and to – you know, go do stuff when they've got things going on and travel and all those things. So there, there are perks to it for sure. Speaking of your own thing, we're sitting in actually your office, which you are pretty much in my mind, you run ASCAP. <laughs> so that's kind of a big deal. Not only are you a hot smoking wife with your own thing, you're running your, well, obviously it takes a village to run this thing, but you are like a major player and one of the biggest PROs, which no one's going to know what that is. Can you explain what you do? Performance. <laughs> sure. Performance. Performing rights organization. Performing rights organization. Um, Very crucial to the money. Absolutely. It's all about the money. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, a performing rights organization makes sure people like Jaren get paid when they have songs on the radio or on TV or in films or whatever. But um, I personally work on the creative side of things, so I work with writers and artists every day and just wear many hats. I work as a booking agent some days and a publisher some days and a manager some days and you just kind of do a little bit of everything you're kind of at the forefront of development and the first step before people kind of get to that next level you help introduce new up-and-coming artists to people and kind of you know get to meet them on their way up so it's cool Jaren. and they can forget you on your way down uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jaren. oh wait i said that wrong i think yeah the, no, that's right the, yeah. Once they get Once up they there, get there they <laughs> <laughs> we know what you're doing. Yeah, so. What is your favorite thing about Evan? Um, just those eyes. Um, no, I mean, you know, we've been like she said, we've been together for maybe 16 years, and coming up here in two or three weeks. Um, it it's you know it's the ability she's had to be with me. You know, when I was sleeping on her couch, you know, over in Hobbs Avenue and Green Hills, 
uh, waiting t- tables at Calypso at night and Alpine Bagel making bagels during and the day. There was a time you weren't even waiting tables at all. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. Yeah, but that's my point though. She, you know, she's kind of stuck with me through everything, and we've always just, you know, we've, we've, she's kind of given me the benefit of the doubt and been like, oh, it's, it's gonna happen at some point. It's gonna happen at some point. You know, and and to have that background build up for so many years of nothing happened or kind of thinking we were doing something cool and then something actually happened and something else happened and something get to the point where we're building a family. We have houses and cars together and we, we have a life together. And we, you know, it, it's like to see how that all come to fruition and then uh, look back on what we started with is, is that's my favorite thing is that uh, it's just been constant no matter what, if, whether it's good or bad, she's always been there. So I think. Oh, <laughs> tears. I'm not well, even pregnant. I want to cry. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying, I mean, you know, not everybody, especially in this business, has someone like that. To and have a badass babe by your side. Yeah, how uh, how much has that meant to you, truly? Did you even know how much that would mean to you when you, obviously? Well, I think you take it for granted as you, when you're younger. You're just like, oh, okay, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. She, she'll like me then because I'll be rich. and <laughs> You know what I mean? Like that stupid shit. But like, and then you realize how, how long the process yeah, is. Yeah, <laughs> well, that and, like, I mean, you look at all the songs. I mean, half these songs I've written that have been hits for people or meant so much to certain people or to, to millions of people that bought them or sang them on the radio or whatever were written about her. So I wouldn't have found that inspiration, you know, without it. So it's just, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of things that, you know, you realize you can't do this business alone, especially uh, me. I don't think, I think I, you know, I say many times from stage, I'm always like, I'd probably be dead, you know, or who knows, in jail or definitely not doing as well as I am now, you know. Uh, so I think that, you, you know, you got to chalk all that up to well, Miss is here. Oh, okay, Evan, what's your favorite thing about Jared? Oh, here we go. Um, he's the funniest person I know. Um, he <laughs> She's right, she's right. Let's see. Um, I'd say it's that he has the ability to calm me down. I tend to be, we're, we're a really good balance in the fact that I'm, I'm pretty anal and um, a planner and a perfectionist and want everything to go right, like every little thing even down to, that's why we argue about where to eat because every <laughs> meal needs to be perfect. Um, for the picture. Yep, yeah, well, for that. <laughs> Those food pictures are famous, Evan. They're a big deal. We all look forward to them. Uh, I am over the food <laughs> pictures, but I know that he does it now for the, the fans. It's for the Do it for the people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think um, just our dynamic, he's able to – to chill me out when I need to be chilled out and, and, you know, let me see that things aren't always so serious. Um, and then also he loves dogs and that's probably one of my favorites. He has a good heart and he's quite the crier too. So that's pretty good. It's just recently since we started having this baby, (laughs) I mean, a damn Geico, a damn Geico commercial could come on. I'm just like, it's good though. (laughs) What's happening? It's pretty awesome. It makes me feel better because I cried everything too. So yeah. Do you guys watch this is us together? I we started it. We started, it. Seen, we started yeah. it. I've watched a few more. I mean, he's not home super often, and I can't just put everything on hold. So yeah. I have to watch some I can't shows. But this is us on hold. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you cry, prepare for waterworks. Oh. Michael oh, cries yeah. every time. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah. he's a big sissy. <laughs> I love you, Hobby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so tell me, we're gonna wrap up. I have like a few more questions. Tell me what you guys are excited about most about having this baby, and how. What you think you hope your life to look like as a unit moving forward now as a three, as a three instead of a two? At this point, I think I can speak for both of us when mainly what's going through our minds is when you're hoping for something or whether you pray or whatever it is, you're wishing for just a healthy, easy situation. That <laughs> I, you know, if at least I am. <laughs> Jared's like easy. Jared easy doesn't want to pass out. Well, I just want it to be, you know, I want it to be a great experience, which I know it will be. But I just want to help, you know, we just want to he- love a healthy baby boy and everything to go smoothly and then, you know, get him home and start life. And, and at that point, God knows what's going to happen because we've never done it before, you know. So I think that's the exciting part and also a little scary. But, I mean, it's, you know, I think – yeah, I get more and more excited as the days go, as we get closer and closer. And, you know, I can't wait for her on the side of the stage with the little headphones on Bud, you know, and <laughs> me looking over and being like, hey, that's my, that's my family, you know, that's, that's my, you know. So that's just such a cool thing to look forward to. Um, I think the starting a family thing is what I'm more 
excited about just like just being like, oh, this is doing something different. Yeah, we've done the same thing together for. I mean, we've had you know new and exciting adventures, but it's just been the two of us and our dogs for the past yeah fifteen and a half years. So I think doing something else, the the next adventure, that's what is exciting. You know what I like though? I like that y'all didn't rush it because some people don't get to have all that time together and everything is different for everyone so it all yeah. works for each other but at the same time how cool that you had 15 years to like have right. these adventures and together. now it's over well, <laughs> oh, shut up. you're such an asshole <laughs> i'm just kidding no as many well, of we you. know each other really well and i think that that is a good thing i mean like you said it's different for everyone but there's no surprises anymore, at least for the two of us. We know exactly how each other's going to react to what. I know I, I can tell you almost exactly the type of dad he's going to be. And tell me what type of dad he's going to be. Oh, he'll be the fun dad, absolutely. But he's also going to be the paranoid dad. He's like going to, he's like going to make my kid wear a helmet just to walk around. Like he's it's extremely true. paranoid. That's how Michael is too. I don't want him to get hurt. He's put it like six seat belts, and yeah. it's going to be. Eight. I just had eight. We got two like more. Like me put and in. the kid are going to go and do like skydiving and roller coasters, and Jared gonna freak out yeah. we'll just do it when he's out of yeah. town <laughs> I was about to say over my dead body <laughs> yeah or yeah. when you're in Europe yeah okay <laughs> I love it you first heard. baby skydiver that'd be brilliant hey gotta get hyperdrive right the first away. online uh, husband and wife fight right before <laughs> <laughs> she has a baby sorry go ahead okay so I'm gonna wrap up and I'm actually gonna ask both of you guys this because I think y'all are both super interesting and can enlighten us all Jaren, I'm going to start with you. Mm. I like to wrap up all my interviews with leave your light. Mm. So leave some inspiration of how you would like to inspire people or how you have been inspired. Oh, I mean, I, you know, I actually wrote a song about this not too long ago, but I think, you know. every song called? Uh, I can't tell you because. It's about a, to get cut and be the well, ninth no, number it's, one. It's a big song. <laughs> but, uh, um, but no, I think, you know, the idea is to be as, you know, remembered for your like for me i put most of what i will have done hopefully by the time i'm gone is i put most of my life into my music and all this stuff right so you build this whole life of you know catalogs and just things that really move people music wise but then you also start a family and you you're also remembered by the love that you gave them and stuff like that so i think that's kind of what the song is but um i mean i think obviously i'd you know i just want to be remembered as you know a Somebody that put true, honest words into songs that had a decent melody that moved people, and also by the you know family that I start, you know, and hopefully finish, you know. So that's good. <laughs> okay, Evan. Can you, can you that one? No, I mean it's <laughs> that was a good one. Just can't win over here. <laughs> <laughs> Evan, okay, leave your life. Um, I'd say just. Be who you are. I'm extremely unapologetic about who I am. I think that that has worked in both my personal life and my professional life. Um, The music business is a tough business, and so getting where you want to be is hard, and you have to really fight for what you want, especially being a woman sometimes. It can be a little tricky. Um, But I think I apply the same thing in my personal life as as my professional life. And that's just I am who I am and I fight for what I believe in. And it's worked out well in both aspects. So that's what I always try to tell people. You guys, (laughs) y'all are y'all may be giving John Legend and Chrissy Teigen a run for their money on Cutest Couple. No, that's me too. That's my celebrity crush. Hardcore. Sure. Uh, And their kid is like so cute. It. I'm starving. Well, it's about <laughs> time to eat. It's dinner time. I think I asked you everything I needed to ask. If not, I mean, there's so much to talk about. He didn't bring up my dad's band's hits, The Killing Kind and Outside Looking In. I have them on there. The Killing yeah. Kind and I Outside read, Looking I read it In. And I was like, wow, I can't believe you had those written down. That's Talk really to cool. me about those real fast. No, I don't. I don't no, know. I want to. Uh, they're no. brought up. It's brought up. So, Bandana was <laughs> basically like. Wrestles it's hard gonna or be awkward because then she's gonna have to cut fat. it with nope. and I'm in the middle. No, oh no, no, fine. it's all gonna flow. It's Hyper, we fine. listen, we are real life here. You know what you said? Be as real and un- 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 unapologetic. That's what's <laughs> happening here. My dad's okay. band was like the Rascal Flats before Rascal Flats. This was nineteen eighty. So So you grew up and you like your dad was like famous. Yeah, well no, I mean they were I mean wasn't famous, but they were like that type of band. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They were on Warner Brothers and you know, they had those hits or whatever and then Restless Hearts came in, Exile. 
Diamond Rio. I was loving that yeah, era. Yeah, and so they kind of got blown out by all those other guys. But I just thought it was funny that you had those songs written on there. I haven't thought about those in a while. But I still have the vinyl there. I just think it's awesome that your dad started this whole th- – I, I love it when people are so inspired by the way they were raised that they loved it so much that they love it too. Oh, yeah. And our, if you look at it, if you Google this, kids, <laughs> uh, the bandana album cover, the big vinyl, looks very similar to color-wise <laughs> to the American Bang vinyl thing. A little influence. Both maybe. on Warner Brothers too. And just saying. Yeah. There could be a connection. Yeah. Father and son. <laughs> Okay, you guys, Evan and Jaron Johnston. I like to get the T. With the T. With the T. Mm-hmm. And baby Johnston is here with us in spirit. Rambo. This is Rambo. Rambo, this is your first interview. Anything yeah. you want to say? <laughs> he has definitely been moving. Yeah, I fit it the food. It doesn't get Jaron food soon. <laughs> 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 okay, you guys rock. Bye.